How do you squat properly and common mistakes to avoid? Let's chat about it. Don't you want to look good naked? So proper squat form is all going to be dependent on you and your specific goals. So when I say you, I'm referring to your personal body structure, your anatomy, how you move with just your body weight with a bar on your back, with dumbbells in your hand, it's all gonna be dependent on you. So that's the first thing to kind of think about. The second thing to think about is what is your specific goal? So with squats, it's all dependent on your primary goal. So are you squatting to build muscle, specifically like in your quads or your glutes? Cause there's different ways that you can bias your quads with different squats or bias your glutes with different squats. So is that your main goal? Is it sports specific? So are you squatting because you're a power lifter? Are you gonna compete in a powerlifting competition? There are rules for that and ways that you have to incorporate those things into your squat and you know, depending on depth and all of that. Are you a Olympic lifter? So are you doing Olympic lifts like power cleans or you know, clean and jerks and things like that? That's gonna be something else where you have to focus on the specific movement for you. Let's talk about a few things to focus on and some mistakes to avoid when you're assessing your personal squat form. So the first thing is not paying attention to your personal body structure and anatomy. So we're all different. We all have different leg lengths and torso lengths and different ways that, again, we move with a bar on our back or without. So we need to pay attention to our personal anatomy and structure. So for example, if you are someone who has a long femur, which is your thigh bone, and a short torso, like me, you may find it harder to squat versus someone who is the opposite. And so when we're thinking about your leg length, your torso length, it can be good to kind of, you know, assess that for yourself. So. For example, the femur to torso ratio is a really good way to kind of see where your body is shifting when you start to squat. So someone who has a longer femur and a shorter torso, like I do, when they put a bar on your back or you're just squatting you know, with body weight, you might notice that you lean forward a little bit more because you're trying to basically adjust the center of gravity so that you're going straight down. And for you, if your leg length is longer than your torso length, it's actually just gonna cause your center of gravity to move forward naturally as you start to bend down. So you might notice that you fall forward a little bit when you're squatting. So that's just one example of our own personal anatomy and body structure being something that you know you might have heard, oh, it's not good to lean forward when you squat or that's wrong or you need to fix that. And there is something behind that, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit, but you have to pay attention first and foremost to your own anatomy and do the, those assessments for yourself. So the first thing you can do is just measure, maybe you don't have to necessarily take a ruler out and measure. So the top of your kneecap to your hip bone, that's your femur, measure that if you want, or just at least look in the mirror and assess that and then assess your hip bone to the bottom of your chest. So if you can notice a, a big difference in the size of your torso versus your femur length, that is something to pay attention to. And that might be, like I mentioned, you might notice that you're kind of shifting forward a little bit versus someone who has a shorter femur and maybe a little bit of a longer torso, or they have more of an even ratio. So maybe their femur length is closer in length to their torso length, that might be someone where they can just squat, put a bar on their back and they squat and it looks perfect. They don't lean forward, they don't lean backward. That's because their center of mass is a little bit more even. So they're not really compensating for that femur length. So if you are someone who has a shorter torso length compared to your femur length, you might find that when you put a bar on your back or when you're squatting, you are falling forward a little bit to keep that bar over the center of gravity. And one solution to help with that is to actually just elevate your heels. So adding a heel elevation or wedges underneath your heels can actually create a shorter femur because what you're doing is basically artificially lengthening your lower leg muscle, your tibia, and that actually will cause your femur to become shorter in space. It'll allow you to keep the bar over the center of mass a little bit easier. So try that out the next time you're squatting, you feel like you're falling forward, add some wedges under your heels and test it out. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about the leaning forward and if that's necessarily wrong or bad with your squat, check out the video, is leaning forward 
word wrong or bad during your squat. So another mistake that I made for a long time that I see a few people making is doing a ton of stretching, mobility, foam rolling work before squatting. So literally spending like 20 to 30 minutes trying to stretch, foam roll, all of that, um, thinking that it's gonna kind of change the way that you squat or your structure of squatting. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can absolutely do mobility work and stretching if that makes you feel better, if that loosens you up, makes you feel good going into your squat. But I think the mistake that a lot of people make is that that's going to actually change their personal structure. Um, so we need to, you know, not try to use stretching and mobility to actually change your anatomy, because that's obviously not gonna work. So paying attention to how your body moves through space, how you squat with a bar on your back or just with body weight, and trying to adjust maybe your foot position or your toe position to adjust to that or adding wedges in. So there's other things that you can do besides just trying to spend hours stretching and you know, mobilizing things. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but it might not be doing what you think it's doing. So it might make sense to spend that time a little bit more paying attention to, okay, how can I set up my squat properly for me and work from there? So another mistake I see, or this is kind of two mistakes in one, is not going low enough in your squat or actually going too low in your squat. So if you don't go low enough in your squat, you're not gonna get much out of it. Again, this is goal specific and it's gonna depend on why you're squatting. Is it for hypertrophy, building muscle? Is it for a specific sport? So that's gonna depend on kind of how low you go or not. Um, but then also the opposite of that is actually going too low and going outside of your personal active range of motion. So what that means is just, if as you come down in a squat, if you go too low, you might notice something called butt wink, which is just where your butt basically kind of pops out a little bit and it causes your spine to round over. And you're really shifting the load from your quads and your glutes to your lower back. And so you don't necessarily want that because that's obviously not gonna be a good thing for your spine, for just overall you know, injury prevention. So thinking about going low enough, dependent on your goals, but not too low that you're going outside of your personal active range of motion and you're seeing your lower back kind of round or your, your butt and lower back kind of round at the bottom causing what we call the butt wink, which I have no idea where that word came from or those words came from, but it kind of makes sense if you look at it. So another thing I see is your stance either too wide or too narrow. So depending on again your personal structure and your anatomy this is really gonna determine you know how wide or how narrow you go for your personal squat but if you're too wide or you're too narrow you might notice that it limits some of your range of motion it can actually also decrease stability so again you have to test and assess for yourself but just pay attention to that finding your squat stance and if it's too wide you might have to adjust if it's too narrow you might have to adjust for you going too heavy or too light so again, this is gonna be one of those things where if you go too light, you might not be getting as much out of the squat as you want. But if you go too heavy and you let your ego take over, then you're gonna be compromising some other things. You might be bringing in some other muscles that you don't wanna be bringing into the picture. You might be compensating with your low back, injury risk, all that jazz. So paying attention to the weight that you're using and making sure that you're using the proper weight for your specific goal and you're executing properly, you're paying attention to your technique. Those all of those things matter. Something else to pay attention to is your breathing and bracing when you're squatting. So whether or not you have a just a barbell on your back or you're holding dumbbells or you have a really heavy bar, barbell on your back, you do wanna pay attention to how you're bracing before you go into that movement because that's gonna be very important to make sure that you're obviously avoiding injury and that you're not compromising your spine and things like that while you have a load on your back. So pay to, paying attention to bracing properly breathing. I have a whole video on this that you can refer to, but definitely something that you want to make sure that you have in check before you put any heavy loads on your back specifically. The last mistake I see is people thinking that they actually need to barbell squat no matter what. So again, this comes back to what I mentioned at the beginning, which is it, it's all dependent on your primary goal. And so if your goal is to build muscle and hypertrophy training is your specific goal, you don't necessarily have to ever <laughs> put a bar on your back and squat to build your legs, to build your quads, your glutes. Uh, this is a mistake that I personally made for a long time, especially as I was getting into more hypertrophy style training, is I thought that I needed to barbell squat. 
And for me, because my body structure, I have a very uneven femur to torso ratio. So my femurs are really long and my torso is really short. It makes barbell squatting for me not the best movement if I'm looking to get as much output as possible within my quads or my glutes. Once I actually transitioned away from the barbell squat and started incorporating other movements, so things like machine squats, split squats, other movements to build my quads and my glutes like lunges and step ups and things like that, that's when things actually started to really happen. You need to pick exercises that work for you, that feel good for you, that you can overload and progress over time. And so if, you know, barbell squatting just doesn't feel good for you, even if you elevate your heels, even if you're doing all the things, you know, pay attention to that and maybe try out a different movement, try out a different variation, like a split squat, for example. There's so many different variations of that. Or you can, you know, hop on a machine, try out a hack squat or even a leg press, for example. So, you know, you don't have to barbell squat if your goal is to build muscle. Again, if you have a sport specific goal, then yeah, maybe you have to barbell squat, especially if you're a power lifter or you're Olympic lifter. But again, don't feel like that's something that you have to do in order to build your muscles.